Ooh, I just burped. I just had a burrito. One of the hardest things about life on this earth and discovering the Jelly Juice protocol and potential immortality is the fact that I uh, put all my information out there and it falls on many, 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 many deaf ears. And I can understand not celebrating holidays and um, different celebrations of milestones, but I really don't understand funerals. I don't understand giving money to people who have been diagnosed with something and also give money to people who just lost someone who passed away or whatever. I mean, I get that people do it because they're trying to help the family because that's a lost breadwinner. But if you know you're going to die, why wasn't there a life insurance policy to begin with? If you know you're going to die or you know that you believe in death, there should be some kind of arrangements to deal with the, the trajectory of death. And that includes having all these different types of services that will basically make your process out of this world easier on you and not taken away from somebody else. And so when you give money to someone who's on their way out the door, you're essentially taking from someone else, taking from their energy, from their financial resources. And essentially you're bringing people down with you. And I know it sounds, it sounds cold. It sounds mean, but it's like, I, I never, I, you know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I haven't talked to my parents in a while. I know they're going to pass away at some point. And I will find out through other people, if I find out at all. There are people that I've known in my life that I know are dealing with cancer, disease, and chronic illness. And I won't know whether or not they've died unless I go and look for their legacy.com page. And I have separated myself because I can't possibly watch someone destroy themselves through the medical system, I can't possibly. I know some of you are dealing with people who are on their way out the door and you're doing everything you can to make their time in this world as comfortable as possible. But the only person that I'm very close to is my husband. And whatever choices he makes, I will support him whatever he does. And I have, you know, different, I have like insurance policies to make sure that I'm okay. So I'm not making somebody else's situation harder because I didn't plan for this type of situation. And, and I, and, and, and since I know this is what's going to, this potentially could happen in my world, I have those things in place. So that way I'm not making it hard for other people around me. And I'm not begging for people to give me money to, I will deal with whatever happens. I will deal with whatever happens on my own. And so, you know, this is a new way of looking at death and looking at people who are dying and looking at funerals, okay? This is a new way of looking at it because people are like, oh, well, you should be there for them. Aren't you a good friend? Good friends try to tell people how to stay alive. Good friends will give you opportunities. I mean, I, I have people that I've talked about the jelly juice to, and they've gotten their bariatric surgery and everything. They've gotten their bariatric surgery like not too long ago, and now they're suffering from cancer. They are suffering from cancer on chemotherapy and I'm just like, what the F? What the F? And so you're getting bariatric surgery. Now you're at a deficit. You're, you're, you're not taking in all the nutrition because you can't. And now you have cancer. You know what cancer is? It's a body at a deficit. Right there, correlation equals causation. When you starve yourself because you have hormonal imbalances and you're getting operations so that way you can lessen the amount of food that's being digested through your body and you know, yeah, you've lost weight and you look great, but then the cancer comes in. Holy shit. Or tumors come in. Okay. And I'm just like, <sighs> and so this is why I kind of put myself on, a, put myself on an Island because this dynamic environment, these viruses are going to cannibalize people left and right. I do everything I can to make sure my husband's okay. If he has weird things that go on, it's like, Jason, just take some salt. Take some salt and just cure it. I know he's not going to do the J-Juice mentality and want to deal with pain and do resets and all that stuff. I know what I'm dealing with. But if I can just kind of get him to where he's at equilibrium so he can still enjoy his life until he decides, until his body decides it won't support him anymore, fine. 
I still got to maintain and get my own life in order as far as financially to make sure that I prepare for anything. Okay. And that's all for you. You know, all of you guys out there, if you know, there are people in your world that you were, are, are with and they are, they aren't doing the JJ mentality. You have to get shit in place. You really do. And so I don't want to be a party to somebody's death. I don't want to be a party to giving money to somebody who's dying. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, did I cover this? I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I'm just tripping out. I'm just tripping out. You know, right there. And so, I, <laughs> and there's nothing I really could say to these people. So I just stay away. I just stay away. I stay away because there's nothing I could do for anyone out there. It's like, you can't do anything for it. So you just stay away. You just stay away. Because there is nothing you can do. Oh, it keeps pausing on its own. Yeah. It's probably because of the, the transmission, you know. I mean, my phone's doing okay. I don't see any. But that's fine. But I know I was covering part of the microphone. But my whole thing is I don't like funerals. I won't go to any funerals. Even if, if my parents died and I learned about it, I'm so sorry. I know that people are going to hold a funeral or just do a cremation. And I hope that I find out if that ever does happen um, from somebody. But I may or may not. I don't know. Um, I've given them all the information. You know, my parents. And, and they make their choices. Okay. I've given my sisters the information. They will make their choices. I've given friends of my... Old friends of my family the information about the JJ mentality and they will make their choices. I've given all my friends in my immediate world the JJ mentality. And they are making their own choices. I do not see a reason why I should give up my money to give to you that is only going to then perpetuate and sustain the same belief system that everyone in your family should die and you should die. And what? Make the death happier by giving you money? By paying the bills that maybe you should have figured out how to pay when you knew that death was going to be at some point and you have to plan for it, have some kind of insurance policy for it, have some kind of uh, cremation policy, have some kind of something, you know, short-term disability or something. If something happens to my husband, I'll go to freaking work. Like, I'll work at freaking Amazon or something. I'll work those shifts, those crazy shifts. And he can take care of sugar if he's ever at that point. I already know what I'm going to do if I ever get faced with something like this. I'm strong enough to go out there and do it if I need to. Right now, I'm trying to write a book. Once I get this book done, I got to get this book done before anything happens in the larger picture. At least I have that as a backup. And then if something happens with him, then I will go work at freaking Amazon. And so I already know what I'm going to do. And that's the thing is... And so it's having your duckies in a row and you know shit's going to happen. And if you are caught unaware and then now you're begging your community to support you while you're going out the door and I don't understand that. And so I can't be a party to that. And people might think that's cold and that's mean and you're being self-righteous. This is about personal responsibility. It really is. And I'm already seeing people that I know that I've known before, like even here in my world, they are dying and it fucking sucks to watch it. I'm not really watching it, but I do check in occasionally to see how things are going. They're not going well. And I'm just sad for, for them. I'm sad that I really couldn't say the right thing for them to get it. That's what I'm sad about is that I, I, that what, thank you, Odd. But I, I'm sad that the fact that people don't want to take other people's advice when it comes to something about pain and I know that, like, who am I? I'm not a doctor. Why should I listen to you? Then that's fine. If you don't understand all sides of an argument and you don't want to say, okay, uh, maybe she has something there. It's completely opposite of what the medical system is. The medical system, you end up in fucking palliative care. You end up in hospice. That's where you end up in the medical system. You do chemotherapy, you will end up in hospice. You will end up in palliative care. Oh, but... The shortcuts, the shortcuts and what is the attraction to dying in this society? What's the attraction of destroying yourself? 
Is it the fact that you can have people feel sorry for you? Is that, is that what it is about dying in our side? Having cancer and then having a broadcast and then you want people to come and give you money for it? Give me money because I'm dying? Why? I don't get it. And I dispute it. I won't take part in it. And if it means that nobody talks to me because everyone's dying out there, I'm fine with that. I am so fine with that. I'm going to keep my husband alive, keep myself alive, keep my dog alive, keep the people that are around in my Facebook world alive that really gives a fuck about what I'm saying. And I've given all of you guys in my old world and in my current world every opportunity to figure out how to redirect so you don't end up wanting your community to give you money so you because you're you have you need chemotherapy or you're doing chemotherapy or I don't know what the heck people are, are with these GoFundMe accounts. What the hell is this? It's more the same. It's a business. Death is a business. And the victims who are dying are the commodities. And that's what it all comes down to. And so chemotherapy is a business. Cannabis is a business. The palliative care all the different benefits and the GoFundMe accounts. It's all a business watching your friends and your family destroy themselves. Destroy themselves. And then you celebrate it at the funerals. And and so you have this eulogy like he was a great man. She was a great woman. And they lit up the room and they, they were loving and they were a loving grandma and all this and all that. And they all enable them to go down the hill. Because guess what was in store for them? Either it was a life insurance policy or it was that they were going to get all the, the, you know, the cars and the toys and all the things that, that, they, that, that the person that's dead has acquired and so they can, get, they can inherit all the estate. And it becomes a money-grubbing type of thing on all ends. It's, it's a vicious business of destruction. And so I walk away from that shit. I walk away. I can't deal with it. All right, bye.